But the specialist, what a repulsive man. His breath reeked and he was sweating and gurning like some kind of madman. The way he looked at me, the way he touched me, it was all so unprofessional, so strange. I felt like a piece of meat on an examination table. During the ultrasound, he let out this scream. I nearly jumped out of my skin. He tried to brush it off, saying it was just the equipment playing up, but the look on his face. And then Stuart, looking sick and pallid, excused himself and left the room. I decided I couldn't stand it any longer either. I wasn't going to let that awful doctor touch me any more than he already had. I stormed out and found Stuart outside the hospital, talking to this lanky, unpleasant man with a little red badge pinned to his dirty green jumper. As I approached, the man leered at me, grinning like an idiot before heading back into the hospital. I asked Stuart who he was, and Stuart just shrugged it off, saying the bloke was a weirdo, not all there in the head. I asked Stuart why he left so suddenly, and for a moment I thought he was going to faint. He said it was the heat of that stuffy room, maybe something he ate, food poisoning. He tried to change the subject, asking me how it went. I lied and told him everything was fine. The baby is at least according to the specialist. But I know I need a second opinion because I don't feel fine. I feel like I did before I was diagnosed with my illness. Tired to the bone, feverish. Maybe I'll go private. I certainly won't be going back to Dr. Malade or Elsa after she recommended that awful man. Stuart didn't say a word on the drive home from Dagna. He didn't even look at me. I tried to comfort him, missing the connection, feeling alone and frightened. But Stuart recoiled, as if he were frightened of my touch. It reminded me of how he'd looked when he fled the hospital. I wonder what he saw on the ultrasound monitor. I wish I had been able to see, but the specialist had positioned it in a way that I couldn't. Now I wonder if that was deliberate. I tell myself I'm being paranoid. Stuart is probably just struggling to accept that I carry his late brother's child, despite how much he pretends to have accepted this. So I don't ask him what he saw on the monitor, but I can't shake the feeling that something is terribly wrong. <laughs>